Be inspired with the special message from Bishop Macedo. Hello, my friends. A very good morning, and may God bless you all. But bless you indeed. I'm not just saying this just for the sake of it. You know, God bless you, as we usually say. No, I truly want God to bless you. And if you agree with me, then you are blessed. Deep within your soul, in your mind, you say, Amen. <laughs> Which means you receive it, you agree with it. When we say, Amen, we are saying, I agree, I accept it. How nice. This is very nice. Well, pay attention to what I want to speak to you about today. We've been speaking about the two natures which Jesus speaks about when he said that he who is born of the flesh is flesh, and he who is born of the Spirit, referring to the Holy Spirit, is spirit. And who are the ones born of the flesh? Well, all of us were born in the flesh. All of us. No one is born of the Holy Spirit before having been born of the flesh. Paul says that, that first came the Adamic nature and then the divine nature, which is the Holy Spirit, the Lord Jesus. So everyone is first born of the flesh. However, it's nice, it's nice, it's magnificent when a person has a supernatural faith, not a natural one, because a natural faith belongs to those who are born of the flesh. Whoever is born of the flesh lives by a natural faith. If they sow rice, they will harvest rice. If they work, they will have money. If they don't work, they won't gain, they won't eat. Now, a supernatural faith, which is the faith that comes from the Holy Spirit, and that's why there is the need to receive the Holy Spirit. When you make the effort to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, to receive the Spirit of Jesus, it's because of that, for you to live by a supernatural faith, a faith that is not available to everyone, but only to those who are sincere, the chosen ones. Remember that we spoke about that, that Jesus said, actually, many are called, but few are chosen. The many who are called are those who are born of the flesh. But the few chosen ones are the ones born of the Holy Spirit. So when a person makes a huge effort, they put all of the physical strength, the mental, emotional strength, all that they are, everything they intend to be or to have, they put everything, they dive into the word of Jesus. Then the Holy Spirit comes upon them and makes them be born of the Holy Spirit. Once born of the Holy Spirit, then, yes, they become children of God. Unless a person is born of God, they continue being children of their parents. But once born of the Holy Spirit, then, yes, they become a child of God. Because a child of God has to be born of God. It's not possible for you to be born already a child of God. It doesn't exist. A person is born in the flesh, children of the flesh. However, at a certain moment of their life, when they have the conscience of salvation, of what Jesus came to do in the world, to give his soul, his life for them, and they say, yes, I want it, I accept it, I surrender myself, body, soul, and spirit, then yes, the Holy Spirit comes upon that person, 
and makes them be born again. And then they are born of the Spirit. So whoever is born of the flesh remains with the carnal flesh until death. Or, yeah, until death. Until death. That's it. When the person, though, is born of the Holy Spirit, then the carnal nature becomes into a spiritual one. The nature that was human is now divine. And then they start to live by faith, not an emotional one from the heart. The emotional faith from the heart is of those who are born of the flesh, born of religion, born from the church, born from the pastor, the bishop, born from their religion, born from football and being part of a group and all these things. These are people who are born, let's say, fanatics in their faith, whether religion, soccer, sports, or anything, or a person. But when a person is born of the Holy Spirit, then they are spirit. They are spirit. They live in a material body, but they are spirit. Their thoughts are divine. Their ideas, their heart, is divine because they receive a new heart, a new mind. When they are born of the Spirit, they have the power of faith, the power of faith that is supernatural, not the power of a natural faith. The natural faith has power to make the person even fanatic, but not the supernatural faith. It's a conscious faith. We know what we want. We have the understanding of what we want and where we are going, where we came from and where we are going. We can't pray with assurance saying, our Father in heaven. This is too strong. I usually pray. I even ask Jesus for forgiveness. I said, Lord, I always do that. When I say the Lord's Prayer, I say, My Father, our Father. Because when you say our Father, I'm already included there. But I want, I want to feel closer to Him. That's all I mean. Because indeed, He is my Father. I have this freedom. I have this intimacy. Not that I am better than anybody else, not at all. But it's a matter of faith that is supernatural. It's something personal. So when a person is born of the Holy Spirit, when they pray, Our Father, they don't pray the Lord's Prayer as if it was a repetition of words. No, but they pray to their Father, my Father, my Father, hallelujah. Oh, dear friend, what I want the most in this world is to bring people to receive what God has given me. And may the Holy Spirit convince you. May He do that in your life. Right now, I pray, in this moment, as we are speaking, may you receive the Holy Spirit. And you know, my experience which I will never forget when I was extremely humiliated, embarrassed in a really sad situation in front of all my colleagues, in front of people who considered me 
when I heard the main pastor saying like this, a dear, you do not have the calling for the altar. You were born to continue working there in the lottery. You were born, and then he, he made fun of me to continue selling tickets. But I wasn't selling tickets. I was an accountant at the time. But he, he kicked me in my leg, you know. I was so embarrassed, but so humiliated. Not because I was in the presence of people and having heard that, but because I was so hopeful that finally I was going to start preaching the gospel. I was about to leave everything behind. And he said, no, continue living your life. And that was a kick in my stomach. It wasn't even in my leg. It was in my stomach. You know what I did? I got on my knees because he himself got really embarrassed. He was really embarrassed. He had nothing else to say. So he just said, let's pray. So I got on my knees and I said like this, my father, it's too great. It was too great. My father, when I said my father, with a huge pain in my soul, my father. Then the second time when I said my father, then a great joy entered me. Great joy. It wasn't the Holy Spirit because I already had been baptized with the Holy Spirit. My nature was already divine. But in that moment, I had an experience, unexpected experience, in a moment of pain and suffering. In that moment, that hour, when I said, My Father, wow, I only said that. I didn't even have to say what I was feeling. I just said, My Father, My Father, My Father. And then the Holy Spirit filled my chest with joy and laughter. Today I understand after what? 45 years or even more, more than 45 years, around 46 or more. Today I understand that laughter that God gave. He filled my mouth with laughter. And I want with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my strength, that the Holy Spirit may fill your mouth with laughter, my friend. Especially you who are perhaps experiencing a situation even worse than the one that I did at that time. And it was exactly in that horrible situation, situation of despair, that the Holy Spirit came and may He come upon you now, right now, in this very moment. If you are alone there right now, it's even better because you have the freedom to enter the presence of God in prayer and say, My Father, My Father. If you are not alone and you are waiting for a moment to be by yourself so you can return here to this broadcast and and say your prayer with me and receive the Holy Spirit. Oh, dear friend, that's what I want. That's what I want for you. It's my greatest desire. By the way, it's not just mine, but it's God's greatest desire. Because when God, when God has pleasure, and what's the greatest pleasure God has? What pleases God the most? What pleases God the most in our lives, do you know what it is? It's when we obey His Word. That's all. That we obey His Word. It's the greatest expression of supernatural faith when we obey the Word of God. That's all. This is too glorious. Only the Holy Spirit 
the spirit of the word of God can make us please God with a supernatural faith, a supernatural faith which is only possible when the Holy Spirit is inside of us. That's why they need to receive the Holy Spirit. This is why this need is more urgent, more needed than the air we breathe in order to survive in this world. Tomorrow we are going to speak more about this. He who is born of the flesh lives by a natural emotional faith, a faith that is a feeling, a faith that is from the heart. But those who live by a supernatural faith, this is the one that is born of the water and of the Holy Spirit. They died to the world and they are living to serve God. May God bless you and I'll see you tomorrow in the name of Jesus. By the way, later on, actually at 12 o'clock, I'll be together again with you. May God bless. Amen.